Yes, sir. My name's Ed. Hey, Ted. I'm Ed. Um, I, um, I, of course, have read about the Jupiter X and the Jupiter XM, and of course, this obviously is like a prototype for something. That's why it doesn't say X. Absolutely. And you, and you see the stickers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Literally, we, we uh, one of our guys, Scott Tibbs, was uh, passing through Chicago uh, Friday night, and it was like, "Hey, do you have one? Yeah, I have one. It's a prototype. Cool." We literally got it in a plastic bag. And he just went by his hotel, grabbed it, because he flew out the next day. He's like, all right, here we go. Like, yeah. Awesome. Do you want to start recording? Uh, I am. Oh, you are? Oh, well, yeah. OK, cool. Uh, you don't mind if we record this, do you? No, it's, uh, do we, I haven't I haven't spent any time with this, just FYI. So, okay. oh, so I've been, <laughs> I've, uh, a lot of times, us, us, when we're working on stuff, there's different teams or different guys that are focusing because there's a lot of that goes into a lot each. Of pr- a lot of products. A lot of products. Sure. And a lot of things that go into each of the products. And so I knew I was working a lot on the Phantom. And that's, that's, that's what. A, a marvelous it's yeah, incredible it's, flagship. It's an incredible. So, so I might not know everything about this yet. Now that they're announced, you know, we'll break off and like, all right, give me this so I can catch up and say. Go. Exactly. Give me the crib notes version. You know, I want to be oh, able no. to do. Oh no, I just need I just need it in the house for like a day or two. Oh, and then you teach and, yourself. Yeah, you do. Just it's 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 a it's a fun all day work. You know, just like right. My wife is like, are you gonna come down? Like, no, hold on, still working on stuff. <laughs> Fig, you know, fig, the nuts and bolts of figuring stuff out. Yeah, understood. So, so I'll, you know. Well, well, right now our, our biggest question is it's it seems in a, to be in split. split mode. Okay, let me let me move this chair out of the way because I was trying to get out of the shot and we'll, oh. we'll see if we can figure that out real quick. Sure. Well, here let me do the keyboard player. Oh, <laughs> Let, let's give it the reset. The old keyboard player thing, you know, if you can't figure it out what's going on, just reset it. Turn it off. Turn it on. Turn it on, and we'll see what's going on. Okay, now we're in single tones. That's cool. Good. I think we're back. Okay, so so it looks like these are patches, and if we press model bank, that's where we choose these. Yes, that's what we, so we have the different models in there from the Jupiters and so on and so forth in here. Right. So yeah, exactly right. So this is like a culmination of a lot of our uh, classic synthesizers in there, and it still has the same uh, classic old school build quality as well with yeah, the metal yeah. top and the prize. So uh, this is an amazing unit, you know. Like I said, we're going to still be digging into sounds and stuff like that, but uh, I think we can also layer the sounds so we can have different parameters mixed together. Well, yeah, unlike the um, the System 8, which I adore, which is based off the analog circuit behavior technology, Absolutely. this is not. No. And that's one of the reasons why this has 256 notes of polyphony, right? Yes. As opposed to only eight. Only eight. You know, because the analog circuit behavior was a newer technology, so it's in its infancy stages still. And so but when we first uh, unveiled it, it was with the System System 1, and that was like four, right. four notes of polyphony, and then the System 8 was eight notes of polyphony. So we are help, uh, hopeful it's going to continue to grow to get, to get there on there. But uh, at this time, that's the current limitation you know, on there. But it's, it's probably going to grow some more. But the processing power for the way you're approaching this emulation is not as demanding as the analog certain behavior, hence you can get significantly more polyphony. Yes, we have, you know, I would say we have a lot more uh, history with the, the current technology as far as the stuff. Uh, waveforms and stuff like that, whereas the uh, analog circuit behavior is uh, a newer road that we're still figuring out stuff, you know. And, and we've done that with the modeling, with such as the V piano, which took us about 10 years to get that ready to bring to market, and also with our VK technology with the organ. So with the ACB, I'm hoping we continue that, uh, continue that there, and uh, that technology gets stronger. But with this one. Uh, we have a, a long history, 30 plus years, with PCMs and the time, time and pitch uh, uh, stretching and all that other stuff. Oh, and yeah. so, two well, I, I have a JV2080. Oh yeah. Fully populated that I adore to this day. It's yeah. just an extraordinary instrument, and there is that negative connotation when you talk about PCM technology that people say Rompler, but when you put a synth engine on top of a Rom sample. Rumpler is so demeaning. It, it just does not tell you what you can do as far as sonic sculpting that you can do with it. Absolutely. Well, when we talk, it's, it's a, a lot of guys try and put analog versus digital, you know, Rumpler versus, you know, uh, 
it's analog circuitry. And I'm just, I just look at the PCM waveforms as just another oscillator. It's just it's another oscillator, waveform. So uh, you're right, it gives us a lot more flexibility. It, there are certain limitations that we get on one side and the other, and uh, but it gives us a lot of flexibility that we, we wouldn't normally have. You know? So that's that's kind of the same thing. And even when we're working with PCMs, we're still working with uh, synthesis. It's still the same, oh, oh, it's the exact same thing. Well, so, I, I had an original Korg M1. Mm -hmm. You didn't have a real filter in there. You did not have the capability to self stems. You basically had a bunch of ROM samples, and they were great considering Absolutely. they fitted in four meg. Yeah. I mean, there's some incredible stuff you there's can do. There's some incredible with that. engineering from those days that people just take for granted. Absolutely. You know, absolutely. But as far as breadth and versatility of sculpting, it is it is very limited. I, I I use an analogy when I refer to an instrument like that, that it's kind of like a series of islands where, oh, I, there's a piano here. I can go ahead and make small sounds around that piano. Oh, hey, there's this really cool sweepy sound. Well, that's another island. It's literally going sample to sample, but you can only do a little bit of exploration around that. You guys have developed this technology where you've got a sample, but you can morph and work that thing to the yes. point where it's almost more like you have this huge planet and you can traverse it without having to jump to something that's very different. You can morph things very similar. So there's much more sonic potential, much more of a soundscape capability Absolutely. with this. And that's the evolution of the technology. But having said that, XV, of course, was the evolution from the JV to the XV. XV. So Absolutely. is that essentially the, the engine that's doing most of the emulation here? Well, um, that, I mean, these that, are the sounds that I'm, we would associate with those no, instruments. The but. XV engine is not the engine for the overall thing. It's a newer engine. It's it's just a combination of engines, you know, uh, it's called this, uh, the Zen Zen, uh, Zen engine. So I believe it's uh, the Zen, Zen engine. And so that has a mixture of uh, PCMs and, an what is it, a analog, uh, virtual, so virtual analog. Because so, the Phantom has some of that too. Uh, no. One thing I love about this, you can actually see, you can see stuff. So, yeah, virtual analog. So the Zen, Zen engine is, has a lot of different uh, elements to it. So that's just one of them. You know, this is one, one Actually, of them. So, th there. so with virtual analog, you aren't dealing with a static waveform. And in the case of a ROM sample, a PCM yeah. sample, you've actually got something. For example, if you had a uh, if you had a square wave, you could apply pulse width modulation to that. Yes. Whereas if you had a PCM square wave, you wouldn't be able to modulate the pulse width. No, because because the sampling has certain certain limitations that we sure. can't overcome. And so with the virtual analog, we can it's, it's less limitations. Absolutely. So, but do. but there are certain things that you can do with sampling that you can't do the more complex waveforms. Yeah, absolutely, so it's both worlds. It's, it's, yeah, there's plus and minuses to both. But rather than uh, you know get mad at one and, and poo poo it, it's like you know learn how to utilize it. Embrace both. And and one thing I I, I have to say we're just talking about this is digital from the 80s and it's digital not, now yeah. is completely different. So when someone goes, oh, this has a digital filter. Ah, I hate digital filters. Fine, that's, that's fine. Uh, I remind people, what kind of TV do you look at? You look at a 4K digital TV. If you were truly an analog head, you would be using a tube TV with tubes because it's a warmer picture, warmer sound, all that other stuff, right? Wrong. So I tell them, in the 80s, <clears throat> you could hear stepping in the filters, okay? You could hear stepping, and that was just the limitation of that technology of that time, okay? Now we've gone in, uh We've gone in at, at, in our little locker room before, and we've we've gone taken the digital filter, turn up the, the resonance, and then do, done a sweep, and put it loud with good speakers, and like, all right, boys, let's hear the, let's hear the stepping, and you can't hear it because the steps are so at such a high resolution. Exactly. You know, your human ears are gonna uh, take it out. Now, let me just say, I'm not gonna say, and I'm not gonna claim that it's better than an analog filter. Of course, somebody on the videos went, oh my God, yeah, you can't claim that. We're not. We're not. It's just another tool in the toolbox that you can you can have in there. So, if, if, and, and the great thing about our instruments now, it's like the Phantom, and I know with these guys, uh, with the Phantom for sure, it has an analog filter or an analog filter out. If you want analog filter, turn off RFX and all that, and just go out and do an analog filter. This is totally fine. But give uh, the digital technology a chance because it's not the same digital that our uh, a lot of the guys here, their dads grew up with. It's totally different. Absolutely totally different. Well, as much as. 
as much as I uh, totally agree that we've evolved digitally, I mean, I still go back to that JV2080, oh, yeah. and that still sounds great. Yeah. I have... Um, and it's still a, working. Oh what my God, is it? yes. It's like 20 plus years old. Yeah. Exactly. And, and so, real quick, that's another thing I, I, I'm really uh, prideful about rolling. Uh, a roll, it takes a roll in a long time to die, generally speaking. You know, it takes, you know, 15, 20 plus years. And then when I have people complain to me, I'm like, well, how old is it? And they're like, well, it's 25, 30 years. And they've never thought about it. They still think of it as like they just bought it. Like, they look back like, oh, so, yeah, so they did just buy it. Yeah, this, <laughs> yeah, this was about 20, 20, 25 years ago. So uh, that's something else I feel proud of. So, like, these instruments, and some of them are pricey, I, I get it, but you're paying for the quality and then the longevity of the instrument. That if you do, do the work and put your work, you're going to easily get your money out of it through, uh, you know, financial gains or just pure enjoyment. Right, and, and that's what a lot of people need to keep in mind, the, the pleasure, the enjoyment of the instrument. And the, the fact that when you purchase something that's this well made, that has had that kind of engineering that goes into it, it's an investment. It's Absolutely. an investment in years and years of that pleasure because I've got a colleague of mine who's currently very frustrated with two instruments that are less than three years old that he recently sent back to get repaired mm -hmm. from the manufacturer. They've been back less than a week and some other system within them has failed again. Yeah. So it's like, you know, you can say I love an instrument, but if it starts falling apart at three years, Versus something that's going to last you, and I'm, I can testify. I mean, I've got a D550 from 87. Oh, yeah. I love it, and it sounds awesome. Yeah, the screen's fading a little bit, but the engine still works. I can still read it. It is still the instrument that I fell in love Absolutely. with. I have an XP50 that put me through college, and uh, it uh, the battery went out, you know, and that was in 1995, all that, those were area. And... Uh, one of my sent texts is like, you know, we can bring that back to life. Just needs a new battery, and I'll zap it. And I was like, no, she's retired. She put me through college, so it's 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 fine. You know, but I know that if I needed to, just throw that battery, pop it back on, and she's ready to go back it, to work. It's amazing. It's amazing. I um I have a number of Rolands, and I've owned a number of Rolands over the years. Uh, I have a an SH32. Are you mm -hmm. familiar with it? Oh yeah, that's the desktop one. Right. Exactly. Absolutely. It's I, I believe it's an unsung hero. Yes. And we're actually going to be doing a few videos demonstrations on that because one of the things that my channel is focusing on are historic instruments that maybe people have forgotten about that you can get out there and like in the case of a Roland it's made well enough it doesn't matter if it's 15 years old or whatever if you like the sound of it you can get it for peanuts compared to something now and you know it does a lot of what something that could cost hundreds and hundreds more would do absolutely I, I refer to those as sleeping beauties sleeping you know, beauties I, I, like I, I refer to that as, as sleeping beauties and that's one because even when you pull it out now we could we could slap uh, a new price like hey unveiling this and it would fit in it looks like it could be a today product you know uh, another, a couple other sleeping beauties that I just love is uh, B-Sense GT you know, oh, oh, so they're still holding their value pretty well. They're holding well. We were in my studio filming for uh, Phantoms uh, a couple weeks ago. And we were talking about it, and we were looking on eBay. Let's go ahead and see if we can find the Beeson GT. And then you couldn't. There were none to be had, or even regular old the first sure. since. So it's, it's a testament. But um, yeah, I just tell people, you know, you know, this gear is going to last a long time, and it's going to stay relevant for a long time. And uh, myself and, and many of the engineers and my colleagues, uh, a lot of people work very hard to do it. So. Uh, uh, one thing that I hear all the time is like, well, I hate internal patches. I hate the preset patches, okay? And I tell people that's great because they like to start from, from scratch. That's fine. But I tell them, well, why don't you just go through the patches, make a list. I go through every single sound myself, and then uh, just... Uh, you build from there. You just build from there. Find something that's similar and then start tweaking it. Just have a good time. Or do a CSI on it and see how they made that patch. <laughs> you know, that's that's a fun thing with the System 8. You oh, can absolutely. do that with the System 8. You know, definitely fun. So cool. No, there, there's no question. The, the presets are a great springboard. Absolutely. And they're, they're basically there to hopefully a few of them give you inspiration, absolutely. give you that wow moment, but to show you what is the, what the potential is. Now, granted, there have been certain iconic presets in your instruments over the years, and I think of the, well, D50, the, the D50 right away. Away, which one? The uh, oh. digital native Did, dance yep. soundtrack. I mean, uh, there, there's so many of those that you hear those, and it's like, that is so awesome, but if I use it, I mean, everybody's going to know. But you look at something like that Vangelis's Blade Runner soundtrack, those are presets that he used on the CS80. Nobody's listening to that soundtrack saying, oh, it's a bunch of presets. You know, yeah, it, no, it, it's about just, the music They're just like, wow, yeah, that's it. So, Absolutely. So, yeah, th it, there's a double-edged sword there with the preset. I mean, you yeah. guys want to show off the instrument, but at the same time, you know, people should make it their own. And, and that's the difference between between, like the M1, you, you couldn't really own it. Every time you modify the piano, everybody's like, yeah, but that's the M1 piano. You can tell it a mile I, away. I would get, uh, you know, 
uh, the, M, the M1 has definitely has its place in our synth history. Oh, oh, you know? oh I'm, I'm not saying oh, okay. it doesn't. Yeah, because I don't want. Yeah, because it, it's. Uh, I still have mine. I yeah, love it. The M1s are great. You know, they're, they're, but I think also you got to look back at the '80s. Some of the '80s synths, M1 included, in some of the Rollins, obviously. Uh, GX7s and stuff like that. Um, they were cutting edge and uh, you, you couldn't dig as deep because that was the Wild West still for sure. digital keyboards. And so uh, the limitations it's, it's, it's are kind of neat to me. Like for example, when we go to the, the, our, our boutique synths, uh, or their analog circuit behavior modeling. Right. Absolutely. What I love about the ACB, our analog circuit behavior, our boutiques, is that they do what they do, and that's what they do. Yeah. So, so it's not necessarily, you know, they have USB, the audio MIDI, and, you know, that's fine. But it's really neat where so someone will come up to me and say, well, how come it doesn't do this? And, how, and it's kind of refreshing to go, she didn't do that back in the day. She didn't. Yeah, exactly. It does what it does. Even when we look at the, the Junos, and they have the uh, the chorus effect, you know, the, all the noise Back and stuff. You, yeah. yeah you, although you do give the option to remove. We do noise. give the option to remove, but it, it, it but is. But true it, to the original. But it is you can fun. Keep it, there. it is fun to go. It's still noisy. It's like, yeah, it is. It's. It's, it's, it's kind of awesome to, some, to go back in time with some of these, be it M1 or whoever, or, or our boutiques, and just like, she does what she does, she does what because she does. that's how it was. Yeah, like because there is, there, is not, <clears throat> there is not going to be a perfect synth for everybody. Everyone, yeah, certainly not. So, so, when, so when we get asked, well, how come you didn't do this, how do you do this? Well, another person, like, hey, this is perfect, or why didn't you do this with that one? Yeah, so it's, it's, it's just like, we try and do the best we can, but like I look at all these synths in here, it's, uh, everyone is a different tool. Different yeah, tool, exactly. Every, everybody Absolutely. has. Like, uh, going back to the V-Synth GT, has an amazing piano. No, it doesn't. That's not its job. It's not what it does. Exactly. That's not its job. A V piano doesn't have an amazing synth. That's not its job. So, so I, I, I just remind uh, keyboard players, synthesizer guys, depends on the job you want. And we have, you find the right tool for that job, and you're gonna really get into it. Okay. You're not gonna grab a mini Moog and say, oh, oh great no. piano sound. No. Or, or hey, why can't you I did, play words on if this? You did, if it did have a great piano sound. Shame on that person who designed that in there. That's not what that's about. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, regarding the ACB technology, and uh, specifically you mentioned your the Juno, especially the Revival Juno over JU-06A. Uh, I noticed, of course, that has the additional ACB modeled Juno 60. Mm -hmm. Do you know if there's any possibility that you will be releasing a, a System 8 plug-out for the Juno 60, which will give us eight notes of polyphony? Uh, there is always that possibility. There is always that <laughs> possibility. God, I hope so. Because that, know, it sounds marvelous. You know, it's uh, the the rolling cloud oriented and the, the plug outs is, is growing. You know, uh, everybody's getting better uh, with learning how to utilize it. So, uh, if you see it here, there's, there's there's some talk possibly going on. You know, on oh, there. I'm so, sure there's talk. So, the question is, you know, well, I'm talking at, even at our level of, of different things and stuff. Okay. So, so it's kind of cool. Uh, and, and speaking of rolling cloud, if you're not a rolling cloud, get on it. But what I would suggest for a lot of people is uh, get the D50, the D50 one, and really look at that programmer. That programmer, we were having fun on the inside, really digging into the programmer of that, and it's like, that is a synth class right there. If you, because that's when we introduce time variant filters and, and exactly. amplifiers. So Absolutely. that one, because you know, we have regular, uh, LFOs and filters and all that. That's the I think it was 86 when the time variant got in there. And so there's a lot of parameters that you haven't that it, that paved the way for rolling keyboards for the next 30 plus years. Oh yeah, that, that, that had your, that your partials whole, and everything. So that, that was thing. the stepping stone into like the XVs and JVs and yeah. everything that followed. Yeah. So if you like, so if you get to rolling cloud and you download the D50 and you really spend time uh, not only playing sounds but really digging into the synth part of it, uh, you're gonna you're giving yourself an education. You know that one that one is a fun one because I've um, I've, I've had a couple of nerd days where I was just, you know, I'm, I'm astounded. It's like, wow, this is old technology, technically from 86, you know, but that was groundbreaking. And, but then when I look at newer keyboards, it's just like, that's in there. So this was like the first of, of that technology. So you can say probably that's where our PCMs really kind of started to break above right. in there, and, and that was the, the foundation for a lot of PCMs uh, for years to come. Right, when the D50 came out, uh, that ROM storage was prohibitively expensive. Yes. So the way you worked around it, you didn't actually sample entire tones, you sampled those attack transients, yeah. which could be just really tiny. But it was the difference between just having a synthesizer sound and having something that sounded real world, like that pluck of a string or that strike of a mallet or that breath of the flute. And that's what really made the D50 
50 shine at that time and it set itself apart especially you just had the, D, the dx7 come out and it revolutionized yeah. the way how you could get these accurate road sounds and how crystal perfect everything could sound but then to give that organic nature the d50 came in and kind of said okay it's my turn to shine and then then the m1 came on board and and then you know the yeah. Basically, the path had been laid, and everyone then started jumping over each other to try to say, okay, good point, we're going to do it that much better. Yeah, let me take the ball from here. Exactly. And so, I, you know, uh, funny thing, I love uh, on the Jupiter 80 movie that we had a couple years ago, there was a section in there where they had original stock Jupiter 8 sounds in there. Uh, I think it was Bank D, I believe. Um, it was a, and it was kind of a fun throwback because when you play some of the brass sounds or some of the sounds, they sounded so dated to com compare to what we can achieve now. Right. But for a lot of us, it's like, wow, back in this time, that was amazing. Oh yeah. And stuff and stuff you know we've never heard before. So, so speaking of D50 and some of these other classics. You have to almost give a history lesson to the newer generation of like, you don't understand. Yeah, you have to appreciate what this means. You know, you know uh, even horn guys are like, wow, that is really killer. So um, it's it's an amazing testament to how, how far we've come. And then now also you see Roland going a little bit more retro back, but retro with uh, with advancement as well, as well you know. Absolutely. So, so like say with the, uh, the TR-8 S, you know, we have not only the TR-8 in there, but we have the, uh, the other iconic sample oh, yeah, in, yeah. in and all that stuff. And then we went out with the new MC707s. We have our verifrace processing in there with the pitch and time. And so it's, it's, it's pretty neat. It's kind of a, a mixture of, of uh, I don't want to say old tech, but classic technology mixed with the newer technology to really come up with something special. So it's and, pretty cool. And not to take away your last, last line in there, which is awesome in and of itself, but that concept of recognizing your own legacy, your own history within the synthesis world, and knowing that just because it's old, doesn't mean that there isn't incredible value there. Oh, no. And then yeah. to actually say, we have built on the shoulders of those before us, yeah. but there's still value in incorporating oh. and keeping that as part of our path going forward. Absolutely. We we have all of our classic synths are, are there are, are the grandfathers of, 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 our, of our synth legacy, but even though we have boutiques and system aids, the Jupiter 8s and Juno 106 and D50s, they are still in high regard and, you know, Anytime you, you, you turn one of those on, it's just like, wow, I, I missed you. How have you been, you know? But what, what I tell people, it's like, okay, these newer ones might not replace the older ones, but I tell them this, keep the vintage synths at the house if you can, use them for special recordings, take the boutiques and the system aids, take those out to like, gig them with, to gig yeah. with those. Right. Keep the vintage ones, keep them pristine, keep them nice, treat them with respect, because many of them are 30 plus years old, and what other electronics do you have in your home that are 30 plus years old that last? But you still like work using yeah. it. Yeah. That 30 year old TV that's sitting in yeah. the basement, you don't want to turn that oh. on. You don't want to look at that. It, it can't even get signal. Yeah. Oh, hey, those VHS tapes from back in the 80s. Oh, man. Yeah, that's what I want to watch right now. Well, no. well, that's that's a good, that's actually a good example of uh, the digital filters from back in the day. A lot of noise, a lot of stuff. Yeah. Now, when you compare what we can do now with the Blu ray and the, uh, the, the Blu ray Ultra or whatever yeah, now, the, the 4K and 4K stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's night and day. It really is. And it has been an absolute delight. Thank you. It's my pleasure as well, sir. Indeed. And uh, I, I have to say, I, I love your shirt. I actually had an, MK, I had an MKS 30, so the rack mount version of that and I had that PG200 programmer. It was a dream. This, was, was, this was my first keyboard. My, really? fa my father brought it. Uh, well played, sir. Uh, he brought it and he said, he said don't don't touch it. Well, <laughs> yeah. but uh, now years later, I am my father's 24-7 tech support. So of like, course. So yeah, we, we always and I tell my father, I have a video for what you're trying to do. He's like, I don't want a video. I want you to tell me. Like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, personal touch. You're my son. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Do you still have it? Yes. I oh, you do. Still, still Does have it still work? Uh, no, she was in a flood. She oh, was, I'm was, so sorry. Was, it's, it's okay. It's destroyed in a flood, but it had years and years of gig wear, which is oh, kind of cool. Sure. Yeah. So um, it's hanging in my studio. It's it's kind of like, uh, and even though well, it's a piece of art. It's absolutely. I consider many, most, all of these is a piece of art. So even when they do pass for whatever reason, um, having it in my studio when you walk in. And you, the synth person, automatically they tell me their story of Absolutely. this or that, like, oh, wow. And so and it, it's, still high, it's still highly coveted, and even not working. So it's kind of it's kind of neat. And then also I have to uh, take care of her, even though she's not working. It's like, hey, respect, because uh, she, she helped bring respect. me to where, to where I am. But that's one of the legacies we see with this. Oh, yeah. That, 
that thing was built like a tank. Built and, like a tank. And that's good to see with, that you're with still its, doing that. With its single, single track uh, step sequencer. Indeed. And, you know, I... And the, those, <laughs> those were freaking metal buttons across the front there. Oh, yeah. You know, that, I mean, that, that thing literally clicked and clunked and, at all. I, I remember at that at that age, uh, the PG-200, my dad got it as well, and he said, here, uh, do some stuff with it. And we had no idea. And so I spent uh, hours and hours, days on end. Woo, woo, woo. I had no idea what any of these oscillator filter. I have no idea. I, all I know is I made the Star Wars uh, phaser sound. I made the <laughs> bomb sounds. I made the string sounds. I don't know how I did that. That was cool, you know. And that yeah. was that was the difference between instruments that had an interface uh -huh. versus. And no offense to the Yamaha DX7. No, 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 absolutely. But that was why you didn't have so many people creating these patches on the DX7 because you had to dig so deep to get to that engine. Whereas. If you had the PG-200, it's right there in front of you. Yeah. And I really love the fact that on the newer instruments, we are re-realizing re how important it is to be able to do to modify the oscillator, to go with the filter, to do the envelopes, and to hit a button, and now you're changing the second or the Absolutely. third envelope, bring the LFOs up. But to take this stuff that during the, the dark times, as I call them, the 80s the into West. the 90s, yeah. when we started to take all of the controls and hide them below, we basically... In the analog days, you had to access it physically. When we went digital, it was all programming, and we could nest things in menus, and then we could save money because we didn't have all these knobs or anything. Absolutely. But we then learned, and like you said, combination of the old with the new, let's take advantage of the new technology, the improved technology, and let's make sure that we still have a way to control this, to make this human again. Because no matter how awesome the technology is, no matter how brilliant the engineering is, this is a musical instrument, Absolutely. and a musical instrument is supposed to connect with a human, and that is what we're looking at right there. We're looking at the yeah. connection. Well, ultimately, our job as musicians is to entertain, and you know, you know, uh, someone's having a bad day or bring up a beautiful memory, or so that's our job is to have them uh, pull it out of them, or you know, without them even realizing, wow, you did that, you know. So now, on our job, on our different YouTube channels that we all have, and as uh, older synth guys, we have to make sure the newer generations understand what each one of these means, the basics of synthesis, you know. And and uh, LFO and everything. So that's, for me, I look at some of these as almost like, okay, we're, you're gonna go old school and you're gonna learn what this means, not just, you know, mess with uh, buttons or knobs like I did, because we didn't have that, we didn't have the older guys or, or technology, teach, uh, YouTube and all this stuff teaching us. Well, with this, you're gonna learn, and everything you learn here will translate Everything else. Everything else. It's, a, it's a language that you'll uh, utilize your entire life as long as you're doing synthesis. Absolutely. I don't want to sell, have you sell yourself short though, because the concept of bringing this to the surface mm -hmm. and just trying something oh, yeah. and not knowing what it does, that is exploration and that is the first step in learning. Absolutely. So, so even if they don't watch some video or they don't have a friend who can tell them, they can learn because there's a knob right there to turn and they're like, oh, so that's what that does. Mm -hmm. And oh, it does something different if I do that knob and then turn that. Oh, yeah. It's like, I, and I it's always, that epiphany, that moment of I like, always oh, have yeah. to start off with cut off and resonance. Yes, because that's, it, it, you know, immediate, usually they're immediate. They're like, I like, know that sound, and that's a huge, yeah. that makes a big difference in the sound right there. Or they learn how to do sweeps, and they're like, whoa! Exactly. And, and it gets them excited, and they show their friends, and then they're like, what else can I do? So for me, uh, the cutoff in residence can be a great gateway. <laughs> it's like, check this out! You follow, and, and there's no question, that's the first wow factor. Uh -huh. Then you go to the envelope, mm -hmm. and, and usually the envelope as it's associated with the amplifier, so they know, oh, okay, so that makes it slowly come in or come in quickly and slowly fade away yep. or fade away quickly. But then you say, but that envelope, you can apply that envelope to the filter. Yes. And then you're not just fading in and out the overall volume, but you're fading out those cool things you were doing with those two. And that's when their eyes go, oh, uh, wow. And, and, and that's then that, then it's programming. And then they're actually getting into it. Well, And then I, I a lot of times uh, required listening uh, and something they can enjoy. I always tell them, well, go, let's go listen to uh, or watch John Carpenter's The Thing, you know. Let's oh. go listen to... A snake Pliskin from Escape from uh, New York. Let's yep. go watch Blade Runner, Scarface, you know, and listen, you know, it's, listen to the music that's going in the background and then also teach them these are the synths that yeah, were that's part how of they that, made that. You exactly. know, and then they're like, oh, wow. And then when they go find these synths, be it in a, 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 a original vintage or a, a emulation or reissue, they're like, oh. 
and, and I can make that sound I can make from that, that movie. I can. Oh, look at that! Absolutely, because I, I know when we were doing the Jupiter 80 uh, years ago, I, I uh, found a the Scarface kind of sound, you know. And so I did it in my demos, and people. Were, and, and the funny thing, I did it in a demo online, uh, and it sounded so accurate that it got tagged by YouTube. You got to be careful with that. No, but it was kind of funny. I was like, yeah. it sounded so accurate, it got flagged. It was kind of neat. <laughs> it's kind of you know bad but neat. You know, no, I, I I was thinking that exactly as you said that. You, these days we got to be careful about that because copyright infringement. Oh, sorry, nope, you, you did something you shouldn't have done. Yeah, but it, it's it's kind of fun. So so that's I kind of get them going, and I tell them, hey, here's some fun movies because it's you know that you can actually bring in there. And then a lot of uh, people now have great sound systems in their home, like mini, mini little theater kind of things. And uh, so these uh, sub oscillators and things that are kicking off with the sub woofers can really like, wow, that I've never heard it like that. Absolutely. Awesome. You know, absolutely. Ed, I don't want to chew up any more of your time. It's all good. Thank it's been you a so delight, much. Sir. Thank you, Ted. An honor. All right.